Hi everyone, Vivian here. Uh, it's been a little while since I did a behind the scenes video and you guys really seem to like them so I thought I would give you a little glimpse of the making of a Moonstone Moon Shadow Box ring that's currently available as a made to order item in my shop. Now if you're not interested in these kind of videos feel free to fast forward but if you are, enjoy. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a setting for this teeny tiny little moonstone. Now typically I make my bezels out of bezel wire, but in this case since the stone's calibrated, I like to use tubing for it. So I've measured out one eighth of an inch on my caliper because that's how tall I want the bezel to be. And then I'm just going to mark a line on the tubing where I'm going to cut. Now that I have my line. I have this handy dandy miter jig that holds the piece in place and I'm just going to secure it right on that line. And I'm going to thread a pretty big saw blade. I'm using number two because it's a pretty thick cut that I'm going to do thread that onto my saw frame and cut. And there it goes. So I seem to have lost the bezel that I just cut out, which happens a lot. So I pull out my handy little broom and hope that when I sweep, I'll find it. Wish me luck. So after sweeping my entire studio, I finally found this little tiny bezel. So next thing I'm going to do is make the border of the shadow box. So I've taken a piece of wire and made it almost into a circle with my own hands. Now I'm going to put it in a mandrel and just hammer it into a nice circle. You don't have to have it perfect right now because once you solder it shut, it'll be a lot easier to make it into a perfect circle. But I just want to make sure that the size is the size that I want compared to the little tiny bezel so that we get a nice looking moon. And I'm just going to cut straight through the seam. Now that I've cut this, I'm going to make sure that the ends meet perfectly. So when you solder this, you want it to be a nice seamless seam. What I have here are called parallel pliers. I like to make sure my seams are straight. And if there's a gap in there, I take my saw blade and I just saw through the gap. And then I end up with a nice perfect seam. Welcome to my soldering station. This is where all the fire and magic happens. So I'm going to solder this little jump ring closed. And I'm first going to coat it in some anti-fire scale. And I'm going to light it on fire. So now that all the alcohol has burned off, I'm going to take a little piece of hard solder and place it on my soldering block and I'm going to put the seam right above it and a little bit of flux and if I did everything correctly I should just heat it up and the solder should flow. goes. Simple as that. Alright, so now that it's soldered shut, it'll be a lot easier to form it into a perfect circle. We'll just put it over this mandrel and hammer it a few times. Alright, now we have a perfect circle. And there's a little bit of solder that is still there that I want to clean up. So I'm going to take my half round file and just clean that up. You can also use your flex shaft, but the camera is currently attached to my flex shaft stand. 
So if I try to take a video while using it, you'll end up with a very shaky result. So I'm not going to do that to you guys. I'll actually use my files, which I very rarely do. And you want to get most of this out so that it doesn't show. Because once you solder this down, it'll be a lot harder to remove. So the next thing you want to do is make sure that everything you're soldering down onto this little back plate that I've cut out is flat against the back plate. So you're going to take the bezel and the side that you're going to face down, you're just going to lightly sand it and then take a flat surface like a bench block and check it to make sure that there are no gaps between the bezel and the surface. And then I'm going to do the same thing to this little ring. I'm going to sand the bottom of it. And I'm just doing this for show because I have a belt sander and I'm just going to put it on there. Um, it's a little bit difficult to videotape that because it does shake a lot. Um, but you can, if you don't have a belt sander, you can do it this way. It just takes a little bit longer. So I'm going to pop that on my belt sander and then I'll have a flat surface on the bottom and then I can put that down on here and get a perfect uh, solder. I am back at my soldering station. The anti-fire scale is burning off. I assembled everything on here and I have my medium wire solder ready to go. So let's apply some flux and heat this baby up. Alright, so this is what we have. It's starting to look more like a moon, but you see there's a lot of excess silver around the shadow box. I'm just going to saw that off. Alright, so now that we have this almost ready, I'm going to make the ring band. I have this nice little pattern wire here and I am going to reference my handy dandy sheet to figure out how long this needs to be for the size that I want to make it. And I've already measured that on my caliper. Just going to mark it. And cut. All right, so I took that piece of wire and I formed it into somewhat of a ring. It does not have to be perfectly round. You just want the seams to perfectly match up. And I'm going to dip it in the anti-fire scale. Get it ready here on my third arm. And solder. So now that this is soldered shut, I can form it into a perfect circle around my ring mandrel. And now that it's a perfect circle, I want to find the seam. I like to mark it with a sharpie. And that's where we're going to file flat. It's going to take my file and file a flat spot. But again, this is just for show because I'm going to go to my belt sander and just touch it up and it'll be perfectly flat. So we are at the final soldering step. I have the ring band here and I'm just going to apply some solder to the flat spot that I sanded. Then I'm going to flip it around, put it on the back plate and solder it all together. So I have here the soldered ring, I'm going to plop it into the pickle for a few seconds and let it get clean. We are ready to pull this out of the pickle. Nice and clean. Right, so as you can see, or maybe you can't, I don't know, but the um, there's still a seam around the outside 
Uh, so I am going to use my flex shaft. It's going to get a little shaky, but uh, hopefully I can show you how that's done real quick. So this ring is ready for a patina. I'm just going to drop it into a solution called Black Max, which oxidizes this pretty quickly. And then we will polish off the excess so that it's only in the receded areas. And then all we have to do is set the stone. So as you can see, I polished off a little more than I wanted inside the shadow box. I want that to be really dark. So I'm gonna take this and the Black Max again and I'm just gonna paint the inside very carefully. Whoop. And now we have a perfectly black moon. We made it. We are at the final step. The ring is almost done. It's looking really nice. The last thing to do is to set this little stone. So I'm just gonna pop it in there. And I like to secure it while I'm setting. So here we have the finished product. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been entertaining or informative or both. Uh, if you would like to see more of these videos, let me know.